Today, North Ravine looks like a stream that has been untouched by man. Flowing through Robert Haynes' property, its water infused with oxygen as it tumbles over rocks and cooled by a shade canopy of alder and redwood trees, it creates an ideal spawning ground for the return of migrating salmon and steelhead. But it wasn't always like this. Not too long ago, the ravine was a weed-choked, trash-filled disaster of a stream. Generations of property owners had used it as a dumping ground. Thickets of noxious weeds and invasive plants blocked the sun, preventing young trees from growing. Mature trees reached the end of their natural life cycle and died, leaving nothing but dead branches rising above impenetrable masses of blackberries. Migrating fish like salmon and steelhead, which were beginning to swim up Auburn Ravine Creek towards its confluence with North Ravine to lay their eggs, wouldn't have a chance when they entered Haynes' property. Robert Haynes recognized the damage that years of neglect had inflicted on North Ravine, and he took action. A driven man, he transformed the creek and created a world where migrating fish would find an inviting environment to spawn and continue the survival of their species. It took 30 years to accomplish, and we're going to tell you how he did it. Jack Sanchez, founder of Sarsis, or Save Auburn Ravine Salmon and Steelhead, the group that sponsors Hain, has a Margaret Mead quote he is fond of repeating. Never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. Indeed, it's the only thing that ever has. What you see up the creek is years of neglect, and when they are through cleaning, that is called fish passage. The process begins with a lot of physical work. The tangled blackberries have to be removed by hand, along with tree roots that block the channel. First you remove the damaging vegetation, exposing the stream bed. Then you have to restore and maintain the restored area. This in here was solid mud before we started this project. You can see how pristine it looks right now. Even though there's not a lot of water flowing right now at high levels, Chinook salmon can get up here. This is ideal spawning grounds for Chinook salmon. Robert, when you first started restoring North Ravine, I know that you had a couple of issues that were pressing, one of which was removing garbage from the stream, and the other was blackberries. Tell us about the garbage. Absolutely. The garbage that we have taken <coughs> out of North Ravine is just unbelievable. And the amount of garbage that we hauled out with them at that time was roughly three ten-wheeler loads of material. It's hard to believe that there would be that much stacked up in a little stream like that, but to take a look at what the end results are. And the end results in this creek right now, we have trout where there were no trout. And once NID gets Gold Hill Dam completed and retrofitted, we will have salmon and steelhead all the way to the town of Auburn. And we're going to have steelhead and salmon coming up this creek as far as they can swim. You guys have been involved in this for a long time, and you're obviously looking at the future. So, speaking directly to the younger generation, what would you say to them? Well, <clears throat> Robert and I, as Robert has earlier said, we're not going to be around when the uh, salmon are in Auburn and, and the people with the 84,000 cars that pass Auburn every day are stopping mm -hmm. to spend money in Auburn and to look at the salmon. But we're, we're, we're a bunch of old people, and we're out reaching out to the schools. I was a teacher for 38 years, and the great joy that I got out of teaching was just passing on uh, wisdom and vision and motivation to very young people. And uh, th this is a great joy uh, to ha be a part of SARSIS, to do the same thing with the environment. And the environment is at great, great risk. And I want young people, as well as the people we're working with who own property on North Ravine, to really get involved and help. What you're really doing is saving the world. When you save salmon, you're saving yourself. Whether you're putting a bridge in, building a road, or modifying stream banks, it is important that you get that stream and lake bed alteration from fish and game. It's very important that you do that. Even though it's your own personal property, streams, uh, rivers, all come under the jurisdiction of either the federal government, state government, and those 
people need it's to know truly that a collaborative effort. That, that Robert must have the cooperation of his neighbors and government agencies. Other property owners join the effort. His downstream neighbor, Jim Taylor, owns Mount Vernon Vineyard and Winery. North Ravine flows through the middle of his property. Jim sees a future where guests can sip wine on the patio and watch migrating salmon pass by. Newly planted fish-friendly trees provide a shade canopy that keeps the water cool. And where shade exists, moisture persists, improving the overall health of the stream. By the fall of 2018, the blackberries have been cleared downstream to the confluence with Auburn Ravine, which flows in from the left. The confluence itself has been restored to a park-like setting, but there is still much work to be done. What motivates Robert? He has the kind of focus that can only come from being driven by an intense life experience. Serving his country in the early years of the Vietnam War, his unit suffered casualty rates of 50%. The presidential unit citation that hangs on his wall describes the combat he endured. As our open flank was being enveloped, the brave men of this company broke a hostile encirclement for the second time. Despite the constant Viet Cong assaults, their continual attacks in human waves, and the many casualties sustained by the American units, the gallant and determined troops repulsed the Viet Cong. His wife Sharon reads a poem he wrote about his experience. Who will remember your smile, your laughter, your jokes, stories of home, and your loved ones? Who will remember the endless nights, weeks without showers, trying to sleep in wet clothes, and the never-ending thoughts of injury or death. Who will remember the smells, the sights, and the sounds of the horror of war? Who will remember the look on your face, your twisted body as we wrap you in your poncho and wait for a dust-off for your ride home? Who will remember when we are all gone? You get the sense that his survival of that time somehow underlies all that he does today. Particular ones are going to be planted off of Palm Avenue in Auburn Ravine in Auburn. There's a thousand feet that we intend on planting on the west side. It's been approved by the city council, and so Sarsis is going to be planting these trees along with some local volunteers from the Rotary Club. And hopefully, as soon as the rains come, we will get these trees in the ground so they can start their little life cycle. The salmon will return. We know that. All we have to do is to get out of their way and they will do the rest. And when they swim up North Ravine, they will be welcomed by the cool, clean water that Robert Hayne has provided for them. As Margaret Mead said, never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. Indeed, it's the only thing that ever has. Robert Hayne changed his world and created a place of healing and renewal on North Ravine, a world that will save the wild salmon for generations to come.